Turner Layton singing the Gator Review Success Transatlantic Lullaby to bring this meeting of the Monday Club to a gentle close until a sunlight from now when I shall be here in the square chair once more. I'm at the BBC in London in case you care to write. Until we reconvene, this is Hubert Gregg saying... Harking back to the difficulty of getting a square meal in the 40s, I remember when the Brits was running, popping almost nightly into a wee club called Allen's. Club, it was one room on the first floor of a building, almost opposite the Windmill Theatre. You stood at the bar with a beer, listening to Alva Liddell reading the news, or it might be a newcomer called Wilfred Pickles. Itmar, too. And then you sat at a small table, often in the charming presence of Windmill ladies, and devoured a very acceptable small meal, even seconds if you were in uniform. Mrs. Allen cooked it, and Pop Allen served it. Beautiful small steaks. Oh, we could have eaten a horse. And with hindsight, I'm sure that's what we were doing. Nobody mentioned it. It didn't occur to anyone to realise it. And I'm damn sure nobody thought of complaining. It was so beautifully cooked. Allen's club was taken out like a tooth by a V-2 rocket late in '44. I never saw Pop or Ma Allen again. But those horse steaks remain a delicious memory. And au revoir. To you. Thanks for the Memory was presented by Hubert Gregg and produced by Barbara Page. This is Radio 2, it's 7.30, and who else to meet on a Monday night at this time but Alan Dell. Thank you very much and good evening. I'm starting our Dance Band Day selection this evening with the band that raised many an eyebrow and not a few mutterings from the Savoy Hotel patrons and the uh, BBC wireless listeners towards the end of the 1920s when the orchestra of Fred Elizaldi was put under contract to play at the Savoy and broadcast, I think, for the first time on New Year's Eve 1927. I have played Elizaldi recordings on this program in the past, and his name comes up again through a letter from Mr. Eisenegger, I think it is, of Sonning Common, near Reading, who wrote to George Chisholm. I don't know if uh, you're aware of a Decca double album issued in 1978, sir, but uh, according to Peter Tanner's album notes, Elizaldi studied under Ravel for a while. I don't know if he did uh, under Defire. No mention of the Defire, certainly, in these notes. If I remember correctly, I think uh, he returned to Manila when he was, uh, where he was born, and he died there. Certainly, he and his brother Manuel and the musicians they recruited caused a sensation in music circles in Britain. And here's a fine example of their jazz-orientated arrangements. It dates from July 1928 and bristles with the solo work of trumpeter Chelsea Queeley, alto saxophonist Bobby Davis, Adrian Rellini, of course, on bass saxophone, and Fred Elizaldi himself on piano. It's called Blue Lady. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
playing uh, alto in that uh, orchestra was our old friend uh, Harry Hayes as well. I think he was in knee pants. From Fred Elizaldi's orchestra playing uh, Blue Lady in 1928, we move on to November 1931 for A. Grant of Shelley Square, Southend-on-Sea, asks if I can play I Don't Know Why I Love You Like I Do by Ambrose, with a vocal, he says, by Sam Brown and Ella Logan. Well, Ella certainly made uh, several records with Ambrose in 1930 and 31, but actually, joining Sam Brown in this song is the lighter-voiced Phyllis Robbins. Sam Brown and 
Phyllis Robbins in 1931. I received a long and uh, most interesting letter from Mr. L. Riches of Burgess Hill in West Sussex. Although we do ask you to send in your requests on postcards, please, it makes uh, life so much easier. And do forgive me, but uh, really correspondence is out of the question on either this program or the Big Band program. It takes me long enough to uh, sort out the requests for this, try to find the records, and then prepare each recording, 78, that is, for transmission. I don't know if you know, but each of them, all 78s are different, each one requires a different equalization. Anyway, Mr. R uh, Riches, among your suggestions, the greater number being American bands, which we don't include in this program, there is a British classic, Reginald Forsyth. Not Frederick Forsyth, by the way, Mr. Riches, he's the author, chappy. Reginald Forsyth's very advanced composition and arrangement of 1933, Serenade for a Wealthy Widow. <laughs> Forsyth Serenade for a Wealthy Widow. To April 1934, and a Roy Fox record with Denny Dennis for Richard Collins of Lee Meadow Luton, who is an avid listener, he tells me, to the old BBC late night uh, broadcasts. Incidentally, this copy of Spin a Little Web of Dreams comes from the late Weems Craigie, Roy's great friend and fan club organiser. <laughs> Thank you. 
broken melody upon the strings of fantasy forget about your rainbow schemes spin a little web of dreams there's a rosy dawn on high that flames across a summer sky to capture all its golden beams in a little web of dreams Trade your pillow for a willow Silvered by the moon Linger there and love will find you soon Love will take you by the hand And lead you to its wonderland Forget about your rainbow schemes Spin a little web of dreams Fox and Denny Dennison spin a little web of dreams. Eric Simpson in Broadstone Dorset obviously likes uh, South American rhythms. Apparently there are variations in tango styles, but don't ask me what they are. Anyway, he's listed three tangos, and the top one is I Once Had a Heart Margarita. Well, as you'd expect, Geraldo's Gauchos have recorded it, but we have uh, Geraldo a little later. So how about this version of this 1937 number by the International Novelty Orchestra? Actually, it's a band directed by Harry Leader, and the vocalist is Ronnie Hill. Until that night I met you at the masquerade I knew at the start, Margarita That on my heartstrings you would play a serenade I said, dance with me, my pretty stranger And with a smile you said, si, si I never knew my heart would be in danger But now it's very plain to see I once had a heart, Margarita, until you stole it from me at the masquerade. to a strict tempo foxtrot. But this is in the bigger band style, more than the usual Victor Sylvester or Josephine Bradley combination. From April 1939, this is the fine Jack Harris Orchestra, when it was full of big names like Max Goldberg, um, Eric Breeze on uh, trombone, Jock Bain also on trombone, and so on. They're playing Heaven Can Wait, and uh, 
They who asked for this fairly recently, I think, will know that it's just for them. Jimmy Van Heusen tune in the Jack Harris strict tempo dance style. That and several of the other records are a little longer than usual this week, so it uh, looks to me as though we're only getting uh, a couple more this evening. But it's quality, not quantity, that matters, really. I have at least uh, two recent requests for Savoy Hotel Orpheon's records, and after wielding the proverbial pin, up came this one, which was a request from Tony Del Acton of South Croydon, who's an Anne Lenner fan, and he recalls this wartime song that she recorded on the 18th of December, 1941. It doesn't take much mental arithmetic to work out how long ago that was. British song by Michael Carr and Jack Popperwell called You're In My Arms. <laughs> As the music the violin plays I'm so foolish to cling to a thing That's no longer entrancing You're in my arms and a million miles away You're in my arms but your heart's far away While we're dancing Lost in a world of its own But I've no right to stray Why do I still pretend There's no end to our lovely romance You're 
water in my arms and a million miles away. Wasn't it yesterday you whispered I love you so? Or was it a yesterday a million years ago? You're in my arms and I gaze in those eyes while we're dancing. Deep in your heart I can see that our love had it While it lasted Bring down the curtain We've come to the end of the play You and your heart Out a million miles Gibbons in the Savoy Hotel of Fiennes in 1941, but with Anne Lenner having the major share of the song You're In My Arms. While Tony Del Acton, who asked for that, is an Anne Lenner fan, Arthur Skidmore of uh, Smathic Worley in the uh, West Midlands is a Geraldo fan, and he sent me a small list on a postcard. What a good boy. I like them all, but in the end picked another wartime ditty which involves just about the whole roster of Jerry's vocalists around August 1942, Beryl Davis, Georgina, Doreen Villiers, Len Camber and George Evans. The first three, I guess, are the subject of this song, Three Little Sisters. Now the 
three little sisters. They were the fairest. So said the soldier, so said the sailor, and so said the lad from the marine. And when the boys marched away, the girls said they'd be true until the boys come back someday. So the three little sisters, three little sisters, they home and read a magazine and tell it to the soldier. Tell it to the sailors and tell it to the marines. Here we are, Geraldo and his orchestra with the ladies and gentlemen of his uh, vocal ensemble, George Evans mainly. Incidentally, although Beryl Davis didn't get to revisit us in September, she hoped she would. She and her husband, Buck, and I had uh, a lovely lunch together during my visit to Los Angeles back in October. And she's in great form and running some big band ideas down in Palm Springs. But more about that uh, perhaps some other time. We approach news time.